in this course have comfort already on the way in with the notion of classes and objects and instance variables and class variables, even if you know some of those things by different names. So if you're on the fence about your preparedness for the course or not sure if what you learned is consistent with our expectations, during the break that we'll take in a bit or at the end of this class tonight, um, do come up to chat with me or others of the staff who I'll introduce in a bit um, to see if we're on the same page as you so that um, frankly, you don't have a, a bad experience over the next several weeks simply because you don't have the requisite knowledge. Six, seven weeks is going to really fly by. And if you're trying to learn the prerequisites for the course while trying to follow the course, um, it could certainly be more than an arduous task. So touch base with us if unsure. Comfort with HTML and CSS. If you didn't really bat an eye at anything we just did, um, that's good. If you're unfamiliar with HTML or CSS, it's probably not going to be ideal. But in fairness, we'll spend just a week or two on the mobile web aspect of the course. So if you're really here and fired up about the Objective-C and the iOS aspect, talk to us too during the break or after about exactly what you do or don't have as experience. You don't, as you've perhaps inferred, need an actual iPhone, iPad, or iPod for the course. You can do everything in the confines of a simulator. You do pay a price for that in that you can't have access to like the accelerometer. So like even shaking your laptop is not going to do anything to the simulator. Um, so you do not have quite as much functionality. But if you do have an iOS device of some sort, you can use it for the course, um, certainly to test your mobile apps, but also your native apps. Um, the catch is that Apple doesn't like to let us install software rewrite on our own uh, hardware unless we pay Apple for that privilege. Um, so you actually typically need to sign up for what's called an iOS developer account, which typically is $99. If you plan on doing uh, iOS development after the course, so seven weeks hence, it's probably a good thing to sign up for anyway, even right now, so that you use your Apple ID, so that you can download betas. For instance, I'm running iOS seven on my phone already because it's accessible to people who are in the developer program. But if you think at the end of the semester, you're not going to try to put something in the App Store and you therefore don't really need access for a year. It's an annual fee. Um, we have an academic account which won't let you submit to the App Store, but will let you uh, install software that you write on your, computer, uh, on your computer onto your phone or your iPad or iPod. So we'll set you up with that in a couple of weeks' time and we'll ask you for your Apple IDs and more at that point. So you don't have to pay for anything. You don't have to sign up for anything. But if you're going to be doing this for the next year, you might as well do it sooner rather than later so you don't have to transition from our account to yours um, in a couple of months' time. Any questions on prerequisites? All right, so expectations, pretty straightforward. To attend um, all of the lectures and labs, more on those in just a moment, and submit all of the projects, more on those in a moment. Lectures, this is lecture. Um, the focus will be on uh, five week, uh, one week on web apps, namely this one, with a project that itself will take two weeks, and then five of the course's weeks on uh, native applications, Objective-C, iOS, and related features thereof. This is an incomplete list of the topics and the concepts that we'll be looking at. Uh, We'll go into more detail over the coming weeks as to what it means to develop uh, native applications. We definitely will not cover the entirety of the iOS SDK. As Apple likes to say, they just released another 1,500 APIs um, as of two weeks ago with iOS 7. There's thousands of methods. APIs for them means method or variable, apparently. But um, the API itself is very rich. There's things like the map uh, SDK with which you can embed maps. And there's the touch interface. And there's a storage layer. There's a database layer. And all all sorts of ancillary ones, what we'll do in our time together over the summer is try to focus on really the most fundamental and the ones that are most representative of other SDKs so that when you decide to write your own application, even if we never, for instance, use the gyroscope, at least the framework and the mental model will be similar from aspects of the language that we did do. Whoops, let's just zoom out for a moment and then zoom back in on labs. So what are labs? So per the course catalog, labs are going to be the hands-on aspect of the course that'll take place same time but on Wednesdays of each week, led by um, the course's teaching fellows. And these will be opportunities for you to bring your laptops as well. We'll meet not here, but in a more classroom structured environment across the hall um, and set up uh, workstations for everyone. And it will be a mixture of hands-on opportunities to explore recent materials, so uh, things similar in spirit to what we did tonight, to explore the week's projects and to get uh, some hints and tips and tricks as to how to dive into those. And also an opportunity for one-on-one -on -one Q and A with the course's staff, generally toward the end of those labs. We'll reserve some time for office hours like environment so you can work on your projects alongside classmates, but have the support structure of some of us there to field questions for you. Um, the website is here, as you might have found already, cs76.net. 
discuss is the web based tool that we'll use over the course of the summer to interact rather than rely on email, which ends up going only to us and back to you. We'll generally point you toward discuss, which is the course's discussion forums. You can still post questions to the staff privately there. There's a link on the course's website to discuss.、Um, and what we'll ask that you do for the first project is say hello to your classmates. So if you'd like to get ahead, there's a general category in the discuss boards, and you're welcome to say hello, a little something about yourself,、um, and perhaps why you are、uh, interested. In iOS development. There's more. Okay. Projects. So the projects are really where you'll get your hands dirty in the course and retain the most and I think learn the most.、Um, there'll be three total projects. Two of them are our choices of specifications. We will specify exactly what the challenges are. The third one, though, will be your choice for you to propose to the course's staff and then design and implement your very own project.、Um, the first two that are signed, will, one will be themed mobile local, more on that Wednesday, but it will involve using browsers' geolocation API, using open data sets. And mashing things together into an interface that allows users to explore news and weather all based on their current location. Evil Hangman, meanwhile, will be an implementation in iOS of Hangman, but much more evil than you're used to, whereby rather than just have you guess the letters that the computer is thinking of, which is a very boring game once you're a few years older than when you probably last played it,、um, the evil Hangman version of this cheats such that any time you guess a letter like E, The computer, or in this case your phone, or iPad or iPod, is going to change the word it was thinking of and re choose a word that's the same length but that has no E's. And when you proceed to guess A, it's going to throw away the word it was thinking about and make sure it has no E's or A's. And when you choose C, it's going to make sure the word it's thinking of is still the same length but has no E's, A's, or C's until finally it beats you by coming up with the word like dog, which you should have thought of, but damn it, the thing was cheating the whole time. And so, Implementing this and calling it not evil hangman, but hangman, and having your friends play it is a wonderful way to make them think that they're awful at hangman. <laughs> All right, so more on that to come. Um, grades in the course. It's fairly straightforward.、Um, performance in the course will be determined by the projects.、Um, no exams, no attendance records, nothing beyond the course's actual workload and immersion. We'll evaluate them on four different axes scope, the extent to which you tackled the project itself. Did you bite off all of the features or did you only even try half of it? Correctness, to what extent is it consistent with our expectations? Design, how good is it underneath the hood? How well designed is it? So, a more subjective measure.、Um, and style, a more aesthetic. Aesthetic measure. Are your variables well named? Are things nicely indented? Is everything pretty printed, so to speak? These are the four axes, and they'll be weighted roughly in order in which you'll spend、uh, time on them,、um, with style being weighted the least, but still important, correctness being worth the most, because that's arguably where you'll spend most of your time getting things to work just right. And the app party. So at the very last week of the class,、uh, Wednesday, August 7th, at 6 30 p.m., We will meet、um, standing up with laptops and with some cake and more.、Um, you're welcome to bring family and friends. And this will be an opportunity really just to share and demo for each other the individualized projects that you chose to do, or even your own implementations of Mobile Local or Evil Hangman to share with the class the different design directions that you chose and see exactly what everyone accomplished. So it should be a fun way to end the term. The cameras, meanwhile, in the class, technically this class is not on the internet, it's an on campus class only. But what we always do in the summer is try to experiment with new approaches. Just to videography, try out new things, new experiments. This TV is new, and this is my first time using it. So, again, forgive any gaps. We can fix them all in post production. But what we will do on an experimental basis is post the videos that we're taking tonight and in subsequent classes online on the course's website. So, if you absolutely can't make it some night, or if I was particularly confusing one night and you want to re watch it, or fast forward, or rewind, or slow down,、um, we'll start posting within a few days the course's video so that you have those there as a reference as well. If your camera shot, And don't want to be on the internet and on YouTube and the like, we'll always reserve this swath of seats so all of you folks will not appear in any of tonight's footage, even accidentally.、Um, so, those first two columns of seats in the middle, if you just never want to、uh, be seen whatsoever,、um, we'll always set aside seats there. Um, lastly, or second to lastly, let me introduce two of the fellows sitting over here, RJ and Rob, who will be on board as the course's teaching fellows, working with us in labs on Wednesdays,、uh, providing feedback on work, answering questions with me on Discuss. Would you each like to come up and say a word? Surprise. You, have to talk. you just have to talk close to my chest because of the microphone.、Yeah. <laughs> 
hi. That's one word. Rob. Word. I'm Rob. Hmm. So, all right, I'll redeem this. So Rob <laughs> uh, recently graduated from the college um, and is going to be uh, working with us in an academic uh, capacity over the coming years with courses like this one. RJ is a rising senior at the college and is also uh, a teaching fellow for one of our undergraduate classes as well. So that was RJ and Rob. Lastly, before we take a break, um, one of the goals of bringing this TV online tonight was so that we could have a little of this uh, in motion. So why don't we, first let me change state here. Pull this up, and let's take a five or so minute break. Whoever would like to come up and play Fruit Ninja on the TV is welcome to. And RJ, Rob, and I will field questions off to the side. And about five minutes from now, we'll regroup. There are bathrooms down at the other end of the hallway. If you also go to the other end of the hallway and turn left and go down a, hall, a smaller hallway, there's vending machines, candy and soda. We'll see you in a few. Someone better come up quick. So we are back, and we are about to teach all of JavaScript so that we can then dive into the project this coming Wednesday. So the assumptions I'd like to make here is one, that folks are familiar with some object-oriented language. JavaScript, as we'll see, is object-oriented. It doesn't have classes per se, but you'll see a lot of the same ideas that you've seen in other languages. We'll focus, too, on just the very basics of syntax. You should find that it's incredibly similar to most any C-style language, C, C++, and so forth. Um, and you will also find that it has most of the constructs, objects, arrays that you might expect in a higher level language like this. And we'll work our way from the simplest of examples to things more complex, ultimately ending with things like AJAX, asynchronous JavaScript and XML, which will underlie the programmatic um, features that we need for this coming first project. So first, a snippet again of HTML. So this is an HTML5 web page, but we can also call this a DOM, Document Object Model, which is just a fancy way for saying tree. Even though we draw the HTML like this, you can actually think of it like an, a family tree whose root node, so to speak, is the HTML node. So let's throw away the doc type declaration, which actually doesn't really fit into this mental model for now. But the root of this page is the HTML tag. And how many children would you say that this root of the family tree has? So it has two, one of which is head and and body. So there's head and then there's body. And in turn, head and body have some number of children. So head seems to have how many children? So one. As an aside, if you really want to be nitpicky, technically head has as many as three children because there's some white space here and there, and there's also some white space after the title. Most browsers throw this away, and you don't have to worry about it. But as an aside, technically you could argue there's three nodes. All right, but we'll assume that it's just one. It's a title. How many children does the title element have? So it is one. So we won't spend, dwell on this, but there are different types of nodes in a DOM, different types of nodes in this tree, one of which is an element node. And an element is the result of having a start tag and some stuff and a close tag, a start tag and an end tag, an open tag and a close tag. Those collectively compose what's known as an element. Meanwhile, this would be known as a text node. There's also comment nodes, which we don't have examples of here. But if you do open bracket, bang, dash, dash, that begins what would be called a comment node. But we'll focus just on these two most common ones. So meanwhile, the body tag, or the body element, to be proper, has how many children? Two each of which in turn seems to have one child. Now there's an anomaly here. There's this href, which I didn't bother giving a URL to because it it's not really necessary for discussion. But this, is href a child of the anchor tag? So it's not. It doesn't really fit into the same hierarchical mental model that we're describing here. So we're going to draw it a little differently. Indeed, if I were to draw this picture as a tree, just using rectangles to represent the nodes, I might draw it as this. I have one, a document node. And this is the detail I said I was going to wave my hand at earlier. Turns out that there is an Uber node, the document node. And for those familiar with JavaScript, you might have seen this before, the document uh, global variable. We'll come back to that. But here's our root element, HTML. Indeed, it has two children, head and body, each of which has a title tag over here and a child of that. This guy has an anchor tag and an h1 tag. Each 
each of which has a textual child. And then just because it definitely doesn't belong below the node, implying that it's child, I'll arbitrarily draw the attribute laterally off to the side. So it's an attribute of the node, but it's not a child per se. So who cares about this detail? Well, if you start thinking about the HTML you see and the HTML you write as ultimately constituting a tree once that HTML is.